I'm going to explain how to solve this uh, problem insurance. And uh, this is a, a control chart problem. And this time we are building a P chart. So I'm going to solve this problem and explain all the necessary steps and walk you through all the steps in Microsoft Excel. So let's take a look at the uh, question, uh, what we have here. So in this insurance, uh, we have an insurance company that has an online help service for its customers and customer queries that take more than five minutes to resolve are categorized as unsatisfactory experience. So basically, we have the categorization between satisfactory and unsatisfactory, good, bad, late or early, and so on and so forth. So basically, uh, generally speaking, defective and non-defective. Uh, one uh, quick note here that we are, although we are dealing with time, we are dealing with minutes, uh, we are not interested in time itself. We are interested in being less than five minutes or above five minutes. So that's why we are dealing with a categorical variable. We are dealing with a discrete variable. And uh, this time, because we are not dealing with a continuous variable and it's a discrete and categorical variable, you are building a p-chart. So, uh, we are taking t uh, ten. Uh, we have taken ten, 10 samples of hundred calls. So our sample size is hundred, and we have all the p values here. So the proportion of bad calls, uh, proportion of unsatisfactory experiences. Uh, in day one, for example, is 8%, day two is 11%, all the way to 15%. So we collected 10 samples. So our number of samples is uh, 10 and our sample size is 100. So let's get started and uh, see if we can solve this problem in Microsoft Excel. So here, uh, if you go to the file that I've uploaded, uh, you see that we have all the available information here. So these are the p-values from day one to day 10 with the sample size of 100. So first thing that we need to calculate is p-bar or the average of all these p-values. So I create a cell here for p-bar and the formula that I would use is the average. So I take the average of all these values. So my argument is going to be A4 to A13. That includes all my p-values. So that gives me my p-bar, which is 0.117. So let's change the color of these cells so I know what I have calculated. And then the next thing that I need to calculate is uh, UCL and LCL P bar P. But in order to calculate UCL and LCL P, I need something else. Let's take a look at the formula. So here's the formula and calculation for P charts. You see that for upper control limit and lower control limit, the formula says that UCL equals P bar plus three times S sub P and P bar minus three times S sub P. So we have the P bar here, but we need to find out S sub P. One little note again here, these three values, values of three come from that 99.7, basically three sigmas to the right and left of mean that we have explained. So, and formula, so you know, uh, in order to calculate S sub P, we need to use this formula. So let's take a look at this formula. Formula says that S sub P equals square root of P bar times one minus P bar divided by N, which is the sample size. And P bar is the average of all uh, P values. So let's take a note of this formula and let's see if we can apply it to calculate S sub P. So, if I want to calculate S sub P, I should use a formula for a, uh, for a square root. The formula in Excel is SQRT, open parens, and inside parentheses, first I need P bar, which is this value. Then I need one minus P bar, and it should be divided by sample size, which is 100 in this case, okay? Alternatively, 
I can take a note of the sample size here. So say sample size, oops, let's fix this typo here. Sample size is 100. And in this formula, instead of typing in 100, I can refer to this cell. Either way is totally fine. So this is again another piece of calculation that I have done. So now I have P bar and SLP, so I'm ready to calculate my UCL, P, and LCL, P. Once again, let's take a look at the formula. UCL, P was P bar plus three times SLP, and LCL, P was P bar minus three times SLP. So here I have my P bar plus three times S sub P, that gives me my LCL, UCL, upper control limit, and then P bar minus three times S sub P. This gives me my LCL. So now I have my UCL and LCL. Basically, I have calculated everything that I need for this control chart. Next step is to build the three lines, the uh, upper line, lower line, and the middle line of my control chart. So I need to build three columns for UCL, P, LCL, P, and also P bar. As I explained in the previous video, these three columns have same values for all 10 samples that we took. Basically, we are building a line in a Cartesian coordinate system. We have different x's, different values on the x-axis, but we have the same values on the y-axis. So all the values for UCLP are going to be the same. I copy this and I paste special. Again, as I explained in the previous video, we should do we should paste only values. So I paste the values here and I drag it down for all 10 samples. Okay, so all these 10 samples, again, if you consider it a Cartesian coordinate system, these are your x's and these are your y's. You see that all y's are the same, so you're building a line, a flat line. And then you have your LCL, I copy and I paste only the values and I copy them down for all 10 values and also do the same thing for p bar my p bar is 0.117 i copy and i paste special only the values i copy all these values down so i have my three lines and now i have and also i have my uh, points my data points that show the fluctuation in my and uh, uh, in my control chart. So now I need to build my control chart. So I select all the p-values and I also select these three, UCL, LCL, and p-bar line. I go to insert in the chart area. I insert a line chart and I insert a line with markers. So this is gonna be my p-chart. So I change the title and move it to this area. So as you see, everything is in control. All my data points are showing a normal variation, a uh, random cause variation, and nothing is uh, suspicious and needs investigation. So this is basically the first part of this question that we already that we covered. Let's take a look at the rest of this question. Part B says that suppose that the insurance company takes four additional samples yielding the following p-values 0 0.9, 0 0.12, 0 0.25, and 0.10. Plot the results and circle all the values that suggest that the process is out of control. Is it possible that the sample result could fall outside the control limits due to pure chance? Explain. So let's take a look. So we are uh, adding four new values. Let's take a note of these 
four new values here. So we have 0.9, we have 0.12, we have 0.25, and we have 0.10. These are the new values that the insurance company has uh, basically need these new samples that the insurance company has collected and so in order to make them separate from the original values i show them with it show them with a different color so these four values are my new uh samples okay so i want to plot these four values on the same chart what i need to do is to extend this these three lines these are the data for these three red magenta and green lines so i need to extend these three lines to include samples 11 12 13 and 14. so what i need to do i just copy and paste them for four more rows again in order to make it visible that these four has been added for uh extending the chart to include these four uh, new samples I change the color and then i repeat the same steps for building the chart this time i include everything okay so this time i include everything all the 10 original samples and the four new samples again insert tab in the charts area i go to line chart and i select a line with markers okay you see that there is a problem so this is my p chart with additional samples let's take a note of that so this includes the additional samples and let's move it to the right of this uh, graph that I have here. So this is my original graph, the original control chart, and this is my new control chart. You see that these two line, these two uh, data points, these two dots are out of control. Okay, so we need to uh, draw a circle, circle around them. So let's do that. This is a circle for uh, this dot, the, this data point that is out of control. And let's mark it as red and change the weight so it is obvious. And then we have another one right here. So you see that these two values are out of control. Okay, so this is the answer to part B of this question. This in this in the original samples, everything was under control. In the new four samples, two of those samples are out of control. Let's see what else this question is. Uh, this question is asking: Is it possible that the sample result could fall outside the control limits due to pure chance? Explain. Yes. Uh, it is statistically possible that the sample result could fall outside the control limits, like as you see here. So this is totally possible that these two uh, data points are uh, out of outside of the control limits due to pure chance. In fact, this uh, should happen 0.3% of the times. So remember, we set the control chart to contain 99.7% of the sample. So statistically speaking, 0.3% of the times uh, data points should fall outside the uh, upper control limit and lower control limit. However, any sample outside the control limit should be investigated. So these two definitely need to be inve investigated as it uh, as it is most likely a problem in the process. Okay, so although technically speaking and statistically speaking, these two can be due to pure chance, they should be investigated. Uh, because most probably 99.7% of the time, 
very, very probable. It is very, very probable that these two are indicators of a problem. Now, let's move to the last part of this question. Uh, it says that in part C, it says that now, suppose that the sample size is actually 50, not 100. Recalculate the control limits for the p-chart. What happened? Explain. So now let's see what changes if we change the sample size to uh, 50. So remember here we had the sample size of 100 and our P bar was 0.117 and S sub P was this value. Let's count, recalculate everything for the sample size of uh, 50. So if sample size is 50, nothing will change. And uh, we will do this calculation only for the original value. So only for the first 10 value. You can alternatively do it for all the, all the 14, but we just do it for the first 10. Uh, sample size is 50, so these values will not change. We assume that they will not change, okay, because we don't have the number of variations. We just assume that these are the p-values calculated based on a sample size of 50. So our p-bar would not change at all. I can either copy it from here or recalculate it, which uh, either way is fine. So p-bar, again, is the average of these 10 values. Again, as I said, I just include the uh, 10 original uh, samples. And uh, as I said, alternatively, you can uh, include all 14. It's, uh, either way, it's totally fine. And then I need to calculate the S sub P for the uh, new uh, samples, which have a sample size of 50. This, in this uh, calculation, uh, something will change. Let's go back and take a look at the formula for S sub P. You see that S sub P is P bar, square root of P bar, one minus P bar over N. So this time we are changing and we are decreasing N. And uh, since the uh, N or sample size in, in the, is in the denominator, this whole, uh, will, uh, this whole uh, standard deviation will go up. So basically our standard deviation will increase. Let's see by how much it increases. So our formula was uh, square root of, which uh, in Excel is SQRT, SQRT of um, P bar, which is here, times one minus P bar, still the same, divided by sample size. This time it is different. Instead of 100, I have 50. So this is going to be my standard deviation. You see that my standard deviation is 0 0.045, whereas my standard deviation used to be 0 0.032. So my standard deviation is much bigger this time. So uh, I should uh, expect some changes in my UCL and LCL. Okay, let's see. Let's see what happens to my UCL and LCL. Going back to the formula, you, see, you know that UCL is P bar plus three times S sub P and LCL is P bar minus three times S sub P. Let's apply these formula and plug in the values. UCL is P bar, which is 0.117 plus three times my new S sub P, which has increased. And LCL is P bar minus three times S sub P, the new S sub P, which has increased. And you see that this value is negative. So remember uh, in our uh, lecture, we talked about this value that we cannot have a negative proportion. So whenever we have a negative uh, LCL for P bar, we change it to zero. We just assume that LCL is zero. So LCL P, we assume zero. Let's change the color of these uh, cells also so we know what we have calculated. So let's see what has changed. You, your original UCL was 0.213. And now the UCL is 0.253, okay? And the original LCL was 0 0.02, and now the LCL is zero. You see that uh, the range between the upper and, con upper and lower control limits 
became wider when the sample size was uh, lowered from 100 to 50. This happens basically because the sample the standard deviation increases as the sample size decreases. Let's build the uh, new uh, control chart. Uh, this was the original control chart. Let's color the header as green so we know that we, are, we don't confuse these two. Uh, so let's build the new control chart here. And this control chart, we color it with purple. So the UCL and LCL this time would be different. Your UCL, uh, I copy from here and I paste special. And I only paste values. And my LCL is zero. I paste and I only paste values. And my P bar is still the same. So I paste special and I paste only values. Okay. I also copy my uh, 10 original samples here so and uh, so just ignore my chat messages uh, let's uh, copy these values all the way down for all the 10 samples so these are my new UCLs my new LCLs man my p-bar again for building the control chart I select all my p-values and all these uh, values that build my upper, lower, and middle line. I go to insert, I go to the chart area, and I insert a line chart, and I select the line with markers again, okay? So this is my new P chart with smaller sample size. So this is my P chart with sample size n equal 50 and if you want to compare it with this one this is a sample size of 100 so we can do a side by side comparison also so if you want I can copy one here and paste it uh, down. So I copy, take a copy of this and paste it so we can have a side-by-side -side comparison of size 100 and size 50. You see that still everything is in control, but this, uh, let's get rid of this legend here and also this legend so our comparison is much more and let's change the uh, scale to the same scale for both charts so you see that now we are doing a uh, much better comparison so here we have 0.3 and here we have 0.3 here we have point I have zero and we have zero you see that this chart with a sample size of 50 is much wider. The range between the upper control limit and lower control limit is much wider than the one with N100. So uh, this is a much tighter control. Still everything is in control, okay? And uh, both in N50 and N100, everything is in control, but you see that in this chart, uh, we are um, this chart is basically a, it seems that it's a better tool to catch errors or catch uh, out of control instances. So this concludes uh, this example uh, of insurance. I will leave this uh, file, this uh, spreadsheet file in the uh, comment section so you can download it and use it. I hope you like, uh, I hope you like this video and uh, it was helpful to learn to how to build a P-chart. Thank you and bye-bye.